Leonard Island is a quarter of a mile in each direction, which makes it approximately a mile if you roll around the shores. There are no roads on Leonard Island or into Leonard Island, so the only way that you can get here is by either air or boat. We get our mail here on an average of once a week, though we have gone once three weeks without. In town, though, you probably know, you get the mailman, which we never get here. But. I like it coming once a week. You've got a better chance of having something. Here's your mail, Stephen. Thomas Holland. I live on Leonard Island, which is off Tofino on the west coast of Vancouver Island. There is a population of four on the island. My dad, he is the light keeper. My mum. And my brother David. He thinks he's Tarzan, but I think he's a monkey. I not only think he's a monkey, I know he's a monkey. <laughs> I would like to show you some of my favorite spots on that island, but right now I have to deliver the mail. visiting my grandmother in England. Where we stayed, we got houses dating back to the 17th, 16th and 15th century, and it's really old when you think that nothing in Canada is that old. Oh, it looks as though she might be coming for a visit. When? Just a like around here. Some of the Indian designs may be oh, older than that, but there's nothing that I've ever seen that's really as amazing as that there. What does it say? Oh, she doesn't say too much, mostly about her visit. Oh, I see. I'll read it again later when I finish gardening. Well, I'm off. You mean you're not going to stay around and help with the work? No way. I think we're really lucky to have our own forest, really, right next door to it. You go in and you turn off onto a whole lot of trails and they each go through a totally different types of scenery and everything. Like, there's some of them I've never been on yet. When I first came here, I went in and then I happened to get myself lost on one of the trails that isn't there anymore. It seems to have vanished. I don't know if there's a ghost at work or not. My dad said there is a ghost on the island. This is Snake Trail we're on at present. It also could be called Worm Trail, I guess. It's as wiggly of a worm or a snake.
This is Sam's trail. It was discovered by Sam, which was the dog of the previous lightkeeper here. And the dog went wandering off, and his owner didn't know where it was going, he just thought it was just running through the woods. But he actually had found this new trail here. We decided to call it Sam's trail because the dog had discovered it. This is Thin Man's Pass because you have to be a thin man to get through. My mum wants to call it Thin Woman's Pass or Thin Person's Pass. We're now approaching a beach. It hasn't really got a name, but it's one of my favourite places on Leonard Island. It's got the fort here that I made. It's really nothing more than a wood puzzle washed high into the bushes a few storms ago. I've also got a gymnastics set up on that beach with the two logs that I swing around on. They look like torpedoes if you look at them from the right angle shooting out over the rocks, the torpedoes, the trees. If they did torpedo the trees, they'd get the breakthrough, they'd hit the beacon, hit our house and blow up the lighthouse. But fortunately they don't exist, they're just locks. Well, there are quite a few places on this beach that are really kind of interesting. This is my favourite, we've got a blowhole over there. During any storm when the, the high sea is blowing all over the beach. It's kind of like a spray or a whale spout. That's about the perfect thing to describe it. David calls it John A. Whale. I don't know why. On, we had two storm, real big storms here last winter that washed logs up right into the bushes and everything, a lot further up than they are now. Now, and this whole beach was about a yard thick in a jelly or foam or spindrift, that's what you call it. And all the trail it was blowing all over the place, everywhere in the lighthouse, just blowing the spindrift everywhere. Tide pools on Leonard Island. This is about my favorite one here. The tide pools are depressions in the rock where seawater can get trapped along with a lot of sea life. One of them, which has about the best selection, is off a place called Ocean Lookout. It's full of sea anemones and starfish and everything. I prefer starfish to sea anemones. So I had a dream the other night but everything was the same size, so as a result, I was the size of a sea anemone. Well, I was swimming in the Atlantic Ocean. One of the sea anemones reached up and caught me, and it pulled me down into its tentacles. It was transferring me from tentacle to tentacle until it had got to its mouth. And then, right then, and I woke up just before it was about to eat me. And this is my brother David's spot. He's building a shack. It's kind of almost like a cave without a roof. And he's building the roof and finishing off the cave. David's done most of this shack and he needs his help whenever he really is getting a tough position, but most of the time that he prefers to build it by himself because he doesn't have to worry about someone putting a beam in the wrong place and preventing something else from fitting. No, 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 no. But I mean, you want it in here, so you get in that way. Not necessarily. Whoa. Look, look at that, look. Okay. You can get it in that way. Well, whatever you do, you're gonna figure out. Presently, trying to work on oh, the door, I think. There. The 
I can't figure out how that thing stays up. Knocking this thing out. Now, I know no, the thing is kind of jammed into place, but I just don't see how it so, can be so sturdy right. like that. I mean, he's walked on that roof and he's, he's put quite a lot of stress on that thing, and I just don't see how it can stay in place. I see what's wrong. This thing isn't um, level. Underneath. Because I'm completely. You need me to me to get something. He to told me that, that I can do all the work I want. However, I've got to remember that there's no way that I can actually claim part of this thing. OK, then, what you doing? No, hold it, mate. You've got your course wrong there. What do you mean? The line's not straight. You told me it's not to be straight. No. Look, 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 look! Steal! What I'm saying. He told me that I can actually own a share in this thing when he turns it into a hotel because I've done some work on it. He's going to build a great big kitchen in it and the fireplace and make it all fancy and turn it into to a hamburger house. I asked him where he's going to get the beef and he says he's going to it's invent a magic formula that would turn me into a cow. I'll tell you when. The fog is beginning to move in now. It'll probably be foggy before too long, and that means a noisy horn goes on. This is the engine that supplies the uh, power to push the compressed air out of the horn, which makes the noise. <laughs> really too loud, the foghorn. Granted, it's supposed to be loud, I guess, so they hear it a long, long way away, but I think it's too loud. Leonard Island, Sir James Douglas. Sir James Douglas, Leonard Island, reading you loud and clear. Over. Leonard Island, good evening. Our estimated time of arrival at Leonard Island is 0800 hours. How's your weather up there? Over. The sea condition in the landing is good, but the visibility is down to near zero in fog. Over. Yes, uh, we're in fog too. Let's hope it's backed out by morning so the workboat can get in. We have some groceries, gasoline, and library books for you. Sir James Douglas, clear with Leonard Island. Leonard Island, clear. It's too bad that the fog crept in so thickly overnight. I would have liked you to see the Sir James Douglas, which is a supply ship which works for the Canadian Coast Guard. But at present, you can only see the workboat as it comes around the bend. The supply boat comes once a month with supplies and groceries for the light station. It's a three-level operation. The first level is attaching the supplies to the hook in the workboat, which is at sea level. My dad operates the winch, which brings the supplies out of the boat, up the line and onto the landing, which is the second level. The third level is my mum, me, my brother, and two Coast Guard men unloading the supplies from the sling and transferring them to any place that's clear. This month we got the regular supplies which we get every month, plus a few other things. Things like, easy, we don't normally get pears. I'm kind of glad of that. Cocktail, yum! You the scotch broth again. Hey, you've ordered a lot of scotch broth. Well, what 
I ordered. Anyway, we'll soon see. We'll check it off at the house. How about you give him the trolley, David? It's just okay. over there. We got her a selection of 65 library books which the Victoria Public Library sends to us on three months intervals. These books include all different types of books that we ask for. If we ask for a book, they will try their best to send it. My dad ordered some books, my mum ordered some books, and I also ordered some books, but I sometimes end up reading my mum's and dad's books. baking soda with vinegar. For the vinegar test I will need one tablespoon of baking soda, one third cup of vinegar, one pop bottle and cork to fit pop bottle. I have never been to a regular school in my life so I've taken all of my lessons by correspondence. I like correspondence. I think it's because you don't have all the strain of you've got to finish it during this time limit. What we do, the teacher sends us our assignments, we fill them in, and then we send them back to her. She marks them and sends them to us. Let's see now, this is a half-size bottle, so I'll have to have the quantity of what I put in it. One tablespoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoon. One third of a cup of vinegar, one sixth of a cup of vinegar. I try to see my teacher at least once a year in Victoria. Sometimes she isn't there though, due to she's on vacation or out sick or something. I enjoy doing the experiments, they're very interesting and sometimes rather messy. In this particular experiment, I am doing the vinegar test with baking soda. Required dose, one and a half. Oh, for all the now what I have to do, I put in the baking soda, and then I hold the cork in one hand, I pour the vinegar in with the other, and it starts turning into a broth almost, a broiling broth. And when it's, it's almost reached the top of the bottle, I quickly pop on the cork, and suddenly, kerboom, it explodes. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, that particular experiment. We do all kinds of sports on Leonard Island. The one you are watching is cricket. Cricket consists of a game of 11 people, nine fielders, a pitcher, and a stumper. But our version, as you can see, has only four people. The object of the game is to prevent the ball from hitting this wicket which are three sticks, and if the ball hits one or passes between them, you are out. When you hit the ball, 
you have a choice of either staying put or making as many runs as you can to the pitching base and back. I actually have made it to go six times each way on high hits. My mum is a good pitcher, but she isn't among the best in the world. You were lucky that time. When Dad was my age, um, he had a paper route in Victoria. He and his friend used to roll over to the light keeper and take him a paper. Apparently he got quite interested in how the light keeper lived there and after my mum and Dad got married, they tried for a job on the lighthouse. I guess it has been a childhood dream for my father to become a light keeper and that dream it came true. This is Beautiful Leonard Island, a newspaper which I publish every second month. Sometimes this goes four months without being published. In this issue, I've got an article about the Olympiad we're going to have here this summer between my dad, my mum, and David. And I've also got an article about a big wave that splashed up and covered our playing field with logs. It took them a long time to clear them all off. I take one issue out of each set I print and put it in a bottle and send that out to sea. So anyone who finds it will be will know about Leonard Island and the people who live on it. A lot of people think that it is actually a very boring life out here, but that's not true. Like somebody asked me where I live and I tell them I live on a lighthouse and they ask, what do you do with all your spare time? And the good answer for that really is what spare time because there's no spare time. It's always something to do. Like We've got to keep up with all the painting and everything and that takes all day. And even on the rainy day, there's always a lot to do. Because it's, it's not as boring as they make it out to be. And then again, like some people would think that it's so exciting and get all the shipwrecks and things, but it's not like that either. Either it's, to it's totally different than the way it's made out.